This one was interesting. Yesterday morning, Michigan 21, Penn State 17. And, uh, you know, you start looking at some of these numbers, this was about as evenly played as you can get. This was a fantastic football game. And I'm going to tell you, I was worried. I'm not a Michigan fan, but I was worried for Harbaugh because they it felt like they had control of this game. Penn State missed a field goal, and Michigan had multiple opportunities. They were up 14-6. to They had two drives that they, they could have done something with. They moved it to about midfield and had to punt the ball back to Penn State. Uh, Penn State drove eight plays, 30 yards, didn't score any points off of it and then held Michigan to a three and out, and then Michigan gave up a 15-play, 53-yard drive for a touchdown, and Penn State got the two-point conversion, and on the next drive, three plays, negative nine yards, and they fumbled the ball back to Penn State. Penn State was able to kick a field goal with under six minutes left in the ballgame. And I watched this, and I thought, is there anything on earth that is more predictable than Michigan fumbling or or throwing an interception in a tight ball game late in the fourth quarter. And I thought, eh, the only other thing would be, who God, who am I thinking? Adrian Martinez. That would make sense. But same thing here because Michigan does this time and time again. They give up that field goal, and Michigan goes six plays, 75 yards in two minutes and 26 seconds to score a touchdown. And... I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Like, they, they, so Penn State went forward on fourth down on the next drive. Michigan ran out the clock. Eight plays, 23 yards, two minutes and 51 seconds. Went into victory formation. Fabulous. Michigan closed out this game. They found a clutch gene. And now I am, I am so psyched about what is to come for Michigan. They've got Maryland this week on the road, but then you got the matchup against Ohio State, that looks a lot more fun right now. Hey, give me give me your thoughts here. I love this. I thought it was a great game. If we want to take turnovers, out of all the numbers, Michigan's dominated every game on the schedule because yeah. they beat Michigan State if it wasn't for two fumbles in the red zone. Yes. This is why you can't take turnovers out of things, but neither here nor there. That, neither All the numbers guys want to say that. Then we should have Michigan in the top four because they, the numbers say they should be undefeated. And the numbers say that, that if without these turnovers, they, they are the better team in every game they've played, and it's not close. I mean, so. that's, that's why the committee ranked them ahead of Michigan State last week. <laughs> but I thought they played a great game. I thought this game went exactly the way I thought. I thought, I thought it was going to be very hard to come by points. I thought it was going to be very hard to come by first downs, and it was. These teams played it kind of, you know, they had drives that they could go on that that they did well, but for the majority of the game, this game was played between the forties, and and not a lot happened. Good defense, really good defense. The offenses fought like hell, and in and Michigan, who I thought was the better team coming in, is the better team, and they won the football game, and I thought that was a big deal. Yes, yes. If Michigan wins next week, you're talking about a ten win season for Harbaugh. Uh, Penn That's State, an unbelievable year, by the way. Yes, a hundred percent. Now, Derek Miller does jump in. Said Michigan tradition: you have to beat, you must beat Ohio State. Nothing else really matters. Uh, tradition that's, of Michigan that's football. Just- that's um, just insane. Well, that's but that's just, that's, that's just the, somebody who's insane. But that's the point that they've gotten to, right? They have not beaten Ohio State under Harbaugh. That is the next step, right? They've they've done this before. They've won ten games. Yeah, but nobody but, else in the Big Ten has beaten them either. True. true. Like. At, what point? Like it would be different if they were losing games to Penn State or losing games to Wisconsin or Iowa. Like if if they were well, losing games to Michigan State, if they were losing other like two or three games a year in conference, but you can't beat them, then they would be having a different conversation. But the fact that they don't lose games all season, almost every year, the fact that you can't beat them makes you just like everybody else in the fucking country. Well, but here's here's the deal. They have lost to all of those teams that you Iowa, Purdue, uh Michigan State, like they have lost to those teams before and and Michigan has not beaten them in what, a decade? I mean, longer? I mean, it's it's absurd. So, it's it hadn't been a decade. It was whenever Fickle was the uh the interim coach. That was the last time they won there. But Harbaugh has never beat them and that's what everybody gets frustrated about, right? Like I'm, I'm with you. I, I agree that you don't have to beat Ohio State to have a successful season. But if he wins ten games, it's an 
unbelievable. Not not a great. It's unbelievable. Yes, they had uh, a losing record last year. This is an unbelievable turnaround. Yes, Penn State. Talking about them for just a second before we move to to some more games here, because uh, we'll have to start going quickly. Penn State played like they knew that they had to have this. They are now six and four on the season. They're three and four in the conference. They went four out of six on fourth down. Like they they played and knew that they had to find a way to win this ball game, and they did almost everything that they possibly could and could not get it done in the end. Now, Penn State, sitting at 6-4, and four, this team has Rutgers and at Michigan State left. More than likely, you're going to beat Rutgers and lose to Michigan State. That's, that's my guess. They play at Michigan State on the last Saturday of the season. You go 7-5, and five, like, no, Penn State was not good last year. But is that a good enough turnaround? Like, people are just fawning all over James Franklin, and you and I have talked about this. Like, he's still a 75 football team. He was a big name for the LSU job before this collapse, and I told you when he was hot shit. I I didn't – I don't know why. I never understood why his name always comes up as this god of football. I don't – I, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. I'm not saying that he's a bad coach at all. He's a really good coach. I don't know why people always think he should be the guy to get the biggest job in the country, though. I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree. I think it's because everybody feels like he's attainable, right? Like, that's, uh, that's the Man, only that's reason. not what you want. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Right. I mean, it's literally, like, the only reason my wife married me is because, like, I was get him. <laughs> you I could, were him. <laughs> like, she lowered her standards and said, "I'll take oh, that." Oh God! It is like this is not this is not that's not a trophy. Yeah, all right. No, Derek jumped in. He said, "My son played at Michigan. That's all that matters to these kids. Ohio State and Michigan, red and go blue." I, I I'm gonna bet the week of that game. That's probably true. Yeah, I'm gonna bet all of that's really true, and I'm gonna bet the week after that game when they lose. I bet that's a huge, huge deal, and it really upsets them when they don't win. I'm gonna bet all of those things are true. I'm also gonna bet that when the season is over, if they finish with ten wins, they go to a big time bowl game and they win that game. I'm gonna bet that's an amazing season that they're gonna look back on fondly of. Derek said, "Look up bet. the tradition." I, I will say this: they do have it all over the locker room about about beating the team from Ohio. Like they, it, it is. It is 365. Like, it's 24-7. Like, they are always thinking about Ohio State. But it, that doesn't mean that it is a uh, an unsuccessful year if they don't beat Ohio State. I'll just say that. Like, I, I think that they can have a successful season without getting that win because Ohio State is on a different level. They just don't. You think we do this show and we don't know the tradition? You think we haven't <laughs> watched college football for almost 40 years? Because we, we, we disagree with the fact that one team, what you did 20 years ago was important, and those schools were really close to one another. One school has done this, and the other school has stayed where they are. Okay? So if your mountain, if your rival just happens to be one of the three juggernauts in college football over the last decade, that sucks. That yeah. sucks. And so you have to reconfigure your priorities. You have to refactor in and figure out what you're going to de- deem as successful or not. Not I, that you can't beat them, not that you can't ever compete with them, but there are only going to be few years where you're actually going to be able to do that. Because at some point in time, I don't th- the tradition doesn't matter, the years don't matter. At some point in time, dudes that step on the field and go up against one another is all that's going to matter. And if you don't have the dudes, and they have all of the dudes, if they're better at you at every position in the game, when you play the game, that's what's going to matter. And all of the tradition in the world, all the want to in the world, isn't going to help you. So you have to reconfigure what happiness is, what success is. Yes. The thing that completely switched this rivalry, by the way, and and switched the Big Ten was bringing in Urban Meyer bringing in an SEC mindset to Big Ten recruiting. Harbaugh is still, at heart, a Michigan guy. He has always been a Big Ten guy. There are unwritten rules that, you know. Well, there are ACT scores that matter. Well, that's that's, that's, that's true, what too. matters. Hey, Brown, yeah, I mean, it's, 
Brown, Brown Yeti said, I would argue Alabama and Auburn are very similar, and Auburn has won, and Michigan has not. They're not They're not similar. This is, this Auburn is where has, that argument goes yeah. away. Auburn is doing the exact same thing. Every kid at Auburn could absolutely get in Alabama, and every kid at Alabama could absolutely get in Auburn. I'm going to, I have no dog in this fight. I don't care about the academics of these schools, but I know about them. I 100% am going to tell you that – very few of the kids at Ohio State playing football right now would be accepted and get in at Michigan. Uh, Derek said that's, that's what teams allow and what teams don't. Uh, Derek said, Chris, that's why they went out and got Jim Harbaugh was to beat Ohio State. He's not magic unless you're going to lower your standards at Michigan, which the school university has made clear they're not going to do. Jim Harbaugh's not magic. He's not a wizard. He can't do it. We we have talked about that on the show for a not long, that he can't long time. Ever do it. I'm just that's not what I'm saying that he will never be able to do it. But year in and year out, letting that be a contested rivalry, at some point in time, one team is recruiting up here and the other one is not. And it's not because they can't get guys. It's because the dudes going to Ohio State aren't ever going to be able to get into school at Michigan. I can only imagine what the comments are going to be when we when we clip this. <laughs> from I'm sure all the Ohio State, State fans are going to really love that. That's fine. I don't I, really care. My, don't my like concern them. is the Michigan fans. So. They need to live in a different real – I didn't make the rules, okay? <laughs> dumb down your ACT scores and let all these dumb dumbs in, and we can play football. All right? I was a dumb dumb. I was a moron, and I played football. God, my, a, my school, LSU, I will use them as an example. In okay. 2019, when they were the greatest team that ever touched foot on college football, most of those kids wouldn't have gotten into Michigan. They just wouldn't have. That's true. That's true. Derek said, trust me, Chris, that's all that matters. You win, Chris. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.